In the Atlantic Ocean, there's an estuary lying inland called the Chesapeake Bay, surrounded by the states Virginia and Maryland. It connects to Virginia Beach, a popular place to go during those hot summer days to enjoy the warm sand and cool waves. This large bay with 150 rivers and streams flowing into its drainage basin was once known for its abundance of blue crabs and oysters and other seafood. It was at its healthiest in the 1600s, but with development happening all around, the waters were ignored as they were contaminated with toxins. This means anything happening to the bay affects both the inhabitants of the waters and the humans. It's estimated that 75,000 clams and worms are killed each year because of dead zones. They're the food for the blue crabs, but with them dying out, the blue crab are dying out too. Since the 1970s, the Chesapeake Bay is what's considered marine dead zones. Dead zones are where there is not enough oxygen to support living species. The water losing its oxygen means aquatic vegetation can no longer grow, which destroys the habitats of other species. At least three-fourths of the bay is contaminated. Fisteria piscida that is one of the deadly toxins that has been found in the bay. It was discovered in the 90s and caused panic to burst out. This killed many fish and caused strange rashes on swimmers. Runoff of nutrients for chickens on nearby farms were the blame for its growth. Some other things that have been polluting the bay are nitrogen, phosphorus, pharmaceuticals, metals, agricultural runoff, pesticides, sewage treatment, and even cleaners used in your own kitchen. Every year, almost 300 million pounds of polluting nitrogen lands in the bay. This, along with phosphorus, feeds the algal blooms that block the sun and oxygen that helped vegetation grow in the bay. In this diagram, you can see the sediment cycle of the Chesapeake Bay, showing how all the toxins come in the water within months, years, and decades. These algal blooms are toxic to both humans and animals. They trigger spikes in pH levels that can harm shellfish and fish. Nitrogen and phosphorus are nutrients needed for living, but excessive amounts are dangerous. Cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, is a toxic algae that affects the nervous system of animals, as well as their liver. This is very bad, like the other toxins in the river, and streams that feed into the bay. Many organizations have been gathering to raise awareness of the toxicity of the Chesapeake Bay, but in the past few years, the issue has been getting more attention and Governor Bob McDonnell of Virginia has promised to restore the bay to have, having safer pollution levels by 2020. Many measures need to be done in order for this plan to become reality. First, decrease the agricultural runoff, fence animals away from the streams, install and maintain grass, and fourth, buffer strips around the fields plant cover crops and planting on nutrient managing is also a good thing that can be done. Upgrade the stormwater systems and sewage treatment plans. This will lower the pH levels in the water. We need to protect the natural filters such as forests, wetlands, oysters, and underwater grasses. According to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the bay has lost 98% of its oysters, about 80% of its grasses, and nearly 50% of forest buffers but we can fix that. These plans will require a lot of financial aid, which is why environmental activists have groups to raise money to help restore the bay. Here are all my citations.